All right, good morning, church family. Hey, it's a beautiful day outside, amen? Hey, let's stand and begin to worship this morning. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn Till I met praise this morning. Hey, you guys can be seated for just a minute while we go over some announcements. So, as we announced last week, we've got uh, a man coming in view of call next week. Um, so, if you'll see at the, at the top of your uh, bulletin there, we have a schedule put out. Um, so, this coming Saturday, May 1st from 5 to 7 p.m. in the Family Life Center, we're inviting everybody to come and to eat dinner and to hang out and to meet this this man that's coming in view of a call and, and get to know him and his family. 
We're really excited about it. Um, yeah, yeah, you can clap, absolutely. We're excited about that. That's something to be, be excited about. Um, there'll be a special called business meeting May 2nd at 1130 right here in the auditorium. So you want to be sure and be here for that. Um, and then our senior recognition is this coming Sunday also. It's May 2nd. If you have a senior in high school, a senior in college, um, somebody that's graduating basic training uh, in, the, in the military, we've, we've honored those in the past, uh, please get with me or Brad uh, by early this week. And then uh, if you do, if you've already given your information to us and pictures and you want to just set up a table, that'll be right out here in front of the office in this hallway. We need those set up by Thursday evening. Um, so that's for senior recognition. Uh, and then the base camp bike rides, that's going to be starting back up in May. If you're interested in that, contact Kevin Gullings. Uh And then community outreach, uh, the Boonville Eats that we've talked so much about, that's still going on on Tuesday nights. We've had the kitchen tore up, getting the new floors and um, we had an issue getting the Cove base put, you know, ordered. So finally, that came in this Friday. I'm going to get it put in Monday morning. We'll get the, yeah, we'll get the kitchen put back together, and Boonville Eats is still a go. Um, and then, if you're interested in serving as our Sunday school director, please contact David Webster. Uh, if that's something that God's laid on your heart, that's definitely a position we need. We need somebody that is going to cherish. Uh, that position and really, really treat it with the respect it deserves. So if that's something that you're interested in, please contact David Webster. And then if, you know, we, we mentioned it last week, if you have any desire at all to be on the praise team, even if you can't sing, you can't play an instrument, we can, we can, <laughs> we can, uh, we can get you trained up there on some computers, running lights. There's a, there's a, there's a lot of moving parts to this thing. We would love to have you. So if, if you feel like you want to serve in some way, please con contact me or Brad and we'll get you plugged in on the, on the worship team. If you would stand and we'll continue to worship this morning.
this morning for your blood. Lord, we thank you for your presence in this place. And Lord, we just ask as we we go into your word this morning, Lord, would you give Jeff the words to speak? Give us ears to hear. Open our hearts, open our minds. And Lord, uh, throughout the the coming weeks as we we seek to call the the man that, that you would have be our pastor, Lord, would you just lead us, guide us? Lord, we thank you for this process. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Good morning, Boonville. Oh, man, y'all are excited today. What's up with that? All right. A couple things. One, you can tell that I made Ricky nervous last week. He cut like seven songs out of this morning's service so that we'd be quick. I, I understand. It's kind of like uh, it's kind of like preaching before the potluck. We know that we have a very special announcement coming up from the pastor search committee as soon as Brother Jeff finishes, which means y'all are all anxious for me to finish so we can get to why you are eagerly anticipating this morning. But before we do that, and I promise you, we are going to be quick this morning. I'll review. I, I don't know. I'd love to think that everybody remembers every sermon you ever preach. But like most preachers, I know that's probably not true. But back in January, I know, think way back, almost four months ago, right after Eric had left, I got the call and I got to be with you all for a couple of three Sundays. And on one of those Sundays, at the very beginning, I talked to you about how incredibly important and strategic this decision is and how one of the most important things that each and every one of us can do is make sure that we are walking in the Spirit and we're Spirit-filled. I want to review that message real quick before I get to, to what I want to share with you for this week. The message began with the reality of the gospel. The gospel is this, that God is the creator of all that is, the creator of mankind. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The problem with creation is sin, is the fall. From Adam and Eve and the taking of the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden, all the way down, man's sin has separated us from the presence of God. God, because of the great love that he had for us, we see in Ephesians 2, he gave his one and only son, Jesus Christ. Christ left heaven's glory the eternal second person of the Trinity, put on flesh and blood, lived a sinless, perfect life, died in our place, was buried, and rose again. 
And in that moment, our redemption was bought. Our reconciliation with God, Hebrews chapter 10 tells us, the veil in the temple was rent in two from top to bottom. And through the blood of Jesus Christ, we can have access to the very presence of God. Then the scripture tells us, Ephesians 2 again, that we were created. This new creation, this born again life, is created that we might walk with God and that we might do the good works that he prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That is our restoration as day by day, week by week, we become more and more like Jesus Christ. That happens as we walk in the Spirit. So then we hit and we said, okay, what does a Spirit-filled life look like? How do you know that you're living a Spirit-filled life? Well, first, you must be born again. To have a Spirit-filled life, you must be filled in the Spirit, baptized in the Spirit. You've got to be uh, born again. So there needs to be a time in your life when you know that in repentance and faith, you put your trust in Jesus Christ. A Spirit-filled life surrenders control of the Holy Spirit. That means that on a daily basis, when Christ said that we must take up our cross daily and come follow Him, that means there needs to be a time daily when you yield control of your life to Jesus Christ as Lord and to the, and to the moving, the prompting of the Holy Spirit in your life. A Spirit-filled life practices spiritual disciplines to aid the flow of the Spirit in your life. Literally, it's like setting the sails of your life so the wind of the Spirit can blow you where God wants you to be. Those are things like your daily quiet time, a time of prayer and, and Bible study. It is, it is gathering together in worship. It's, 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 it's being sharpened, iron sharpening iron in small groups and among other believers. It's sharing your faith with others on a regular basis. It is ministering and serving in the church and in the community however you can. So the spirit, the basic spiritual disciplines, you need to practice those. I encourage you, remember back in January, I encourage you, I hope all of you chose a good path and plan for, for how am I going to be in God's Word? How am I going to be listening to God and ready for this day that's coming next week on May 2nd? A spirit-filled life feels the conviction of and confesses all known sin and stops sinful behavior. So you search your heart, you say, Lord, search my heart. If there's anything in me, convict me. Let me know. Let me, let me see the sin that's in my life. 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So on a, on a, I think on a daily basis, we need to search our hearts, reflect on our lives. And if we have sin in our life, we need to confess it and we need to deal with it. If it's sin against another, we need to go and ask their forgiveness. If it's between us and God, if it's something we're not doing that we ought to be doing, we need to confess that and, and, and get engaged in doing what God wants us to do. But, but you cannot have a spirit-filled life and have known unconfessed, unrepentant sin in your life. It's just, it's impossible. You're not going to, you're not going to be led by the Spirit and in conscious rebellion against God at the same time. And then finally we said, the Spirit-filled life is experienced by faith. That realization, if I have done these things, if I know I belong to Christ, if I know to the best of my ability I'm walking with Him and surrendering myself to Him, you've got to have faith that whether you wake up with a big smile on your face singing hymns or whether you wake up going, oh, it's another day or however it is, if you are yielding yourself to Christ and you are walking as best you can in obedience to Him, the Bible says you are filled with the Spirit. Your particular demeanor matters not a whit. I mean, it, it matters some. We all ought to be joyful and, and out, but, but your outward expressions, those vary by personality. Don't let that be the sign for you. Let rather what God's Word has promised be your confidence. Well, we covered all of that. And if, you, if any of that doesn't sound familiar, then just go back on Facebook to January and find the sermon and listen to it again. I am going, now right now, I'm going on the assumption that everyone that's here, to the best of their ability, is trying to walk in fellowship with God and filled with the Spirit. They're trying to make spiritually minded decisions. The, the advice and counsel I'm fixing to give you will be of no value whatsoever if you are a hard-headed, hard-hearted 
sinful, hypocritical Christian that's playing church this morning, what I'm saying will do you absolutely no good. Just ignore it, forget it, and don't come to church next Sunday. That's all I'm asking, okay? Now, presuming everything else is right, what I want to do this morning is take just, just a few minutes before, before the search committee kind of presents via video their recommendations and all those things. I want to give you what I believe is my very best advice and counsel for how to know that you're ready to make a decision and how you can have confidence in the decision that you make but how you vote on the candidate that's going to be presented next week. First, you need to ask yourself the question, do I trust the process that First Baptist Boonville has been engaged in these last several months? In the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 6, when the, the Grecian widows were complaining because of the Hebraic widows, we had that passage where, where the, the, the seven are chosen, that, that prototype of, of deacons in the life of the church. And, and what happened was the problem had, had come when they knew what was wrong. They, they began to, to seek wisdom and know how we're going to solve this. And, and the apostles laid out the proposal that, the, that from amongst them they choose seven godly men they could put over. And here's what the scripture says in verse 5. It says, this proposal pleased the whole company. This proposal pleased the whole company. I, was, <coughs> I say over and over and over again, when a church is seeking to make really important strategic decisions in the life of the church, and I don't think there's any decision more strategic in the life of a church than the calling of a pastor, that the most important thing that you do as a church is you determine how you are going to seek and discern God's will. And I, I have facetiously said over and over again, you know, they rolled dice in Acts chapter 1 whenever they replaced Judas, and if the church agrees on that, that'll work. And I, I mean that. If the church agrees, that'll work. I just don't think most churches would want to use that as their, their method. But you guys begin a process, even back before Eric left, you begin a process, as you said in your constitution and bylaws, as you elected and put together a committee, you had opportunity to, to give input and to decide. You've decided, and for the last, I guess, several decades, if not all the way back to their beginning, the method, the process at, at First Baptist Church Boonville is to, from among you, to select and elect and confirm a pastor search committee and to give them the charge of looking out and seeking and bringing back to the church a candidate, and to, and to lay him out and let the church examine him and then let the church vote and affirm that recommendation. It's been the process. I've watched a lot of churches, and I've watched First Boonville this time around. I think you all have followed your process well. I think you've been faithful to what you said you would do. I think everyone has, has, has been in. But you have to ask yourself, have I seen anything in the way that we have worked the process out that I think is wrong that I think is, is, um, is self-seeking or, or mannerly. I mean, you just look, I'd say look at the people that are on the search committee and say, do I trust them? Do I think they're spiritually minded people that are seeking the Lord? Do I think they represent our church? If you believe that, then you shouldn't have any trouble with the process that y'all have followed. So that's the first thing you have to do, because if you don't believe in the process, it's not going to matter what the, the result is. You're going to say, well, I just don't, I don't like it. So ask yourself that. Now, here's if, if you say, well, I'm not sure. I've got questions about the process. I would say first, okay, it's not too late. Maybe you should have said something about it a month ago or three months ago or something like that. But for sure, go and talk. Go and talk to a member of the search committee. Go talk to Chuck Cherubic. Go talk to to, to, to your to a deacon, but go, go say, here. I'm wondering, I have a problem. Chances are, if you've got a concern and you'll go and talk to someone, they'll be able to clear it up. It is likely a misunderstanding of how the process has worked. But if you do that and you still are not sure, then I would say you may decide you want to vote no, not because of anything about the candidate, but because you're not sure the process was right, and that would be that. That that's a possibility. So 
So I'm going over that, that list. That would be a rare, rare thing. So I'm saying, check, check yourself and go back and check, am I walking in the Spirit? Because it would be a rare thing to have a problem with the process as it's been laid out. But that might happen. So you've got to consider that. Assuming that you think the process has been a good process faithfully used, then prayerfully participate in the process. I told you back in January the most important thing that you would be doing for the next several months until the pastor came and beyond was being in prayer, living in prayer, praying for the committee, praying for the candidate that they were going to select and bring to you, just praying, praying, praying. Even more so now, prayerfully participate in the process. In Acts chapter 1, whenever the disciples, before they, they chose, it says in verse 14, they were continually united in prayer along with the women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. Then it goes on and describes how then in the midst of that prayer, as they were waiting on the coming of the Holy Spirit, they were just abiding together in prayer. You need to be doing that. You need to be abiding in prayer in this process. I don't know what your normal practice of prayer is, but I would say setting aside at least an extra 10 minutes or so a day that you are still before the Lord and that you are praying specifically about First Baptist Boonville, the pastor search process, the candidate that's coming, the decisions that you have to make. Just be still and talk to God about it. Scripture says in Philippians chapter 4, in verse 6, the Apostle Paul is writing to the church at Philippi. He says, don't worry about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Abide in prayer and pray to get a peace about what's going on. And when I say a peace, if you know that you've dealt with any unconfessed sin and that you are the best of your ability, you're walking in the Spirit, as you pray about what's going on, the decisions to be made, you, you ought to come to a peace that God is giving a good thing. Uh, that, that peace at some point should settle in in your heart. You ought to be at peace about it and say, God, thank you. I talked to the committee about a month ago as they, as they were narrowing down and getting close. And, uh, and uh, whenever we came in to discuss, one of the things they wanted to discuss, it, it, and I'm, I'm, I'm tattling on them, so just no, I may never get invited back again because they're all going to say, Brother Jeff, you, just, you, you told on us. But they were concerned. They said, Brother Jeff, it's going well. We are confident we have the right person, but can it be this easy? It's only taken us about three months to get here. Shouldn't it have taken like, you know, two or three years or all that is. And I, I, I went down the list and asked him, you know, have, have, have you done all the things you need to do to, to dig in deep? And, to, and that yes, yes, yes. They spent an entire month in prayer before they even began looking at resumes together to be ready. And uh, so I went around and polled them and they were all to a, to a person. They were incredibly confident. This was the direction I said, you know, sometimes we walk in the valley and it's hard and it's uphill and it does... And sometimes God lets us have some time on the mountaintop and we can see everything clearly and easily. And, and sometimes it shakes us up when we've been through valleys like COVID. I mean, there's been a lot of stuff in the last couple of years that just been hard. And sometimes God says, you know what? We're not going to make this hard. We're going to do. And, and it took a little confidence to, to say they were at peace and they were a little nervous because they were at peace. So I want to tell you, I hope you get peace quick, and don't, don't say, now, Lord, I'm at peace. I shouldn't be at peace. I should, there should be this, this hurt, turmoil. Maybe, but maybe not. God, God blesses and gives us good seasons. So pray until you kind of get at peace. Now, then here's, as you're prayerfully participating in the process, here are four things between now and Sunday that I think you can do. Number one, Pray about the candidate. Are you hearing a recurring theme here? Once you get the name, I want you to pray about the name and the family specifically. I mean, spend some time in prayer today, next couple of days. As you pray and after you pray and as you're praying, 
talk to family members and friends. I can tell you, most of you are going to recognize the name, and for sure, once you kind of figure it out, you'll, you'll put together, oh, I know this and this. Start talking to the people that you know about the name, and you do your vetting. You say, wow, yeah. And if you have any questions, just start talking and praying together about it. Examine the candidate on social media. What I mean by that is go creep him on Facebook and stuff like that. I mean, type in the name, find his little thing, go hit his deal and do a little, oh, friend me and hit a friend thing. I'm pretty sure he'll probably friend you. I don't know. He may not, but it doesn't matter. He's got a public thing. You can go look at his deal. It'll link you over to his church. And his church, like everybody else, they've been Facebook living messages for the last year and a half. If you just skip down about every eight posts, it's Sunday's sermon. And you click the video, and everybody knows how to do that now. And you can watch it. I would say, you know, you just do your little fast forward scroll and get to the message and listen. If you want to go listen, if you've got time this week, you can listen to God. You can spend your whole week. You probably listen to 45 or 50 messages this week on Him if you wanted to. I would encourage you to go listen to a couple. Just go, go check out Easter. Go check out the last couple of weeks or what have you. And listen, and you begin to hear, your committee's done all this. Now it's your turn to get a chance to do it. So go avail yourself of those opportunities. As you're doing that, ask yourself, what questions do I have? Your committee has spent hours and hours Praying about, talking on the phone, interviewing in person, all of that, the candidate. They've done all the reference runs and checks. So they know him really well. You're getting to know him well this week. You're going to have some questions. The chances are very good. The questions you have are questions the committee has already asked. They may share some of that, and they may answer your questions this morning before you even know to ask them. But it may be that you have some questions that are unique to you. Think about it and write it down and come Saturday when you have the opportunities to, to meet with and to talk to the candidate, come prepared with your one or two big questions that you would like to hear his answer to. Whether one-on-one -on -one or in the group, ask those questions so that you can hear. So come prepared. Now, if as you do all this other stuff, you come to the place that you're at peace and you don't have any questions, that's fine. Don't come feeling like I have to ask a question. But come, if you have questions, ready to ask it. Okay? When you get the answer to those questions, you need to ask yourself this. Do I have one big problem? Uh, you're listening and look at the candidate. What you're really wondering is, do I see, in my spirit, do I sense a problem with this candidate and is it a big problem? Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you may say, you know, the candidate is an OU fan and not a Razorback fan. That's a problem. Well, I mean, I, I get that. I understand. Especially since Arkansas just lost a receiver to OU. I mean, that's aggravating. That's irritating. That's annoying. I apologize for that. I didn't know that was happening. But it's not a big problem. That's not a game changer. Alabama fan, maybe, but not Arkansas, I mean, that, that's, that's not a game changer for you, okay? That should not be a thing. It may be that he likes, that he likes Wrangler and not Levi's, and that may be a problem for you, or vice versa, okay? That may be a little quirk. That's not a big problem. What's a big problem? Acts chapter 15, verse 38. Paul and Barnabas were getting ready to go back on a second missionary journey. And Barnabas came in and said, hey, let's take John Mark again. And Paul said, no, none yet. And in, in verse 38, the scripture said, Paul insisted they should not take this man, speaking of John Mark, who had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not gone on with them in the work. I bolded in my notes who had deserted them in Pamphylia. Do you remember John Mark, when they got to Pamphylia, he got upset about something and he left and went back home. And for the Apostle Paul, that was a deal breaker. And the scripture goes on to say, there arose such a sharp disagreement. They parted ways and Barnabas took John Mark and he went to Cyprus and Paul took Silas and they went 
and visited the churches they'd been before. A big problem is something that when you look at it, you say, you know, I'm not sure that with this problem, if we call this man, I would be able to continue to worship at First Baptist. That's a big problem. That's a problem that says, you know, now that may be a doctrinal issue. That may be a stylistic, a methodological. I mean, it can be a lot of things. And I want to remind you, the Apostle Paul, 15 years from now, loves John Mark and calls him and asks him to be a part. So it doesn't even have to be something that's permanent. It's just saying, I don't think he's right, and I think it's a big deal why he's not right. I think it will hurt the church, and I'm not sure that I'll be able to go, but it is a big problem. You ask a question, if something in your spirit says that's a big problem, then you need to vote no. I mean, if, if, if you say, I think this would, would hurt the church, I think this would disrail the church, but it doesn't need to be itty-bitty. It doesn't need to be, I didn't like the clothes he wore, or I didn't like the passage he preached out of, or I didn't like the version of the Bible. He, I mean, don't let it be a petty thing. Don't let it be something that's just a matter of, of, of opinion or or. Make it be a matter of conscience. But if there is a matter of conscience and you're not able to resolve it, I mean, you've got a big problem. That means you've got some questions. You need to talk to the candidate. You need to talk to the committee. You need, I mean, you need to discuss. That's what Saturday's all about. But if you cannot resolve it, then in good conscience, if you're not at peace, vote no. I mean, that's as clear as I know to make it. Here's my last thing, and then I'm going to let you all get to, the, to hearing from the committee. If you trust the process, and you feel like the church has chosen the best way to seek, and they've honored that, and they've done that faithfully, and if, after prayerfully participating in the process, after praying, after talking to others, after doing all the research that you need to do personally, after hearing from the committee, after coming to the candidate with questions and hearing his answers and all those things, after all of that, if you don't have a big problem, if you don't have some red flag that's come up in your spirit, then your default position ought to be to vote yes. Hear what I'm saying to you this morning. If you are, to the best of your ability, walking in the spirit, and if you trust and participate in this process of a pastor search, and the opportunities that are yours this week as members now to examine what the committee's already done. And if in all of that, you don't get a check in your spirit that says, I have a big problem, you should vote yes. Your default, your presumption should be, I'm going to be for the committee's recommendation. What you're doing this week is asking, is there something in this process that would stop that? Now, I'm going to say something kind of, kind of nosy pushy, so just take it however you want to. If to the best of your ability you're walking in the Spirit and you go through the process this week and you're ready to vote, then, then do. If something's going on in your heart and life, that obviously if, if you're not sure, if you're doubting your salvation period and you're going through a an existential experience and you just don't know you need to talk to me you need to talk to someone and, and work through but i would say if you if you're going through something personally that's just a real spiritual struggle that has nothing to do with this search it's just with you then i would pray about it i would talk to friends but i would i would encourage you just choose to abstain this next week if you know, whether it's something in family, whether it's deep grief, I mean, if, if there's something going on that has you in a spiritual turmoil before we ever run this video, then, then you need to ask yourself the question, do I need to take a deep breath and trust my brothers and sisters and, and just abstain and say, Lord, I, I'm not hearing your voice for all right now. It, it could be that some of you across COVID and then this time, You've been struggling with, man, Lord, do I need to stay at First Baptist? Maybe, maybe there's another church that you're wondering, is God moving me to? And, and you're kind of struggling with, what should I do? And in the back of your mind, you thought, well, I'll wait and see who they get, and then I'll decide. I understand that. I mean, I really do understand that, that feeling. 
But know this, if something stirred you enough that you're not sure if you ought to be here or you ought to be somewhere else to be in God's will, then you've got static in your life. And you may need to say, you know what, I'm going to abstain and I'm going to let that play out and then I may talk to the pastor when he comes about what I should do. But if you've got something in your life, it's not a big problem in terms of the candidate or the process or that. It's just, you know, I'm struggling with some stuff. It's hard to know how to hear the voice of God when that goes. And sometimes the best thing we can do is say, Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait on you and I'm going to trust the body you put me in to make good decisions because I don't trust my decisions right now. That's okay. You're not sinning against God. You're not doing it. But if, that, if that's there, that may be what you need to decide this week is that I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to rest and then whenever the ballots go out next week, you just take the ballot, smile at everybody, put nothing on it, fold it up and drop it in and just abstain. That, that is an honest and viable option. And I want to make sure you realize it's there. Okay, I've said almost that. I'm going to pray for us. And then I believe we have a video from the search committee. That's how they're going to present the candidate in. When I finish this prayer, the Facebook feed is going to